On this episode of Searching for History, we're taking a quick stop in the town of Tenaino. Tenaino was established in the late 1800s and is famous for its Tenaino sandstone. Join us as we walk around Tenaino. This is the city hall, and I believe it's made out of Tenaino sandstone. <laughs> Look at this feature. These are cool decorative elements. Yeah, it's interesting. So this one is a man. He has some kind of a crown on. Looks like fangs and then some sort of trumpet with banners. There's another one on the other side we should look at. And this is a woman figure with a crown of flowers. And it looks like also trumpets um, with a banner of ribbons. She has really ornate hair. Yeah, and almost, uh, these are like goat's ears or yeah, something. Uh -huh. It's almost like the, like a fawn. Yeah. So Highway 507 runs through Tenaino, so it's pretty busy with traffic. Today they're having a farmer's market. I believe all of these buildings here are made of Tenaino sandstone. There's the State Bank of Tenaino. Actually, has quite ornate uh, pillars. I think these are Corinthian. Maybe. Look, you have a Freemason lodge over there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely faced in sandstone. Apparently this building had burned down. Yeah. So like the bank, this property is also on the National Register of Historic Places. This entire block of Tenaino is made of Tenaino sandstone. It's a landmark tavern. Built in 1906. Let's go look at the quarry. Okay. So here's some sandstone blocks that were carved out of the quarry, but apparently never sold to anyone. You can see where they drilled down to then cleave off that section of stone. You can see it on that one too. On this one. Right here. Yeah. So this is the quarry pool. People used to swim over there inside that yeah, area. you see that. There's like a diving board and a ladder to go in there and... Yeah. So behind that, the pool is something like 100 feet deep. And when the quarry was active, and as they got down to the bottom, they hit a spring and it rapidly filled. And the story is that all of the equipment that they had down there is still at the bottom including a steam engine. Huh. You know, because back in the day they had like steam donkeys right. and things like that. So it was some sort of a steam engine, whatever they had that day working down there is still at the bottom. Odin. So it was the Van Tyne and Fenton's Tenino Stone Company. A second quarry on the east side of town, off Military Road, was run by the Eureka Sandstone Company. And then a third, located on Lemon Hill west of Tenino, was ran by the Hercules Stone Company. Uh, yeah, I guess in 2017, divers dove to the bottom of the pool 
and confirmed the presence of the channeling machine at the bottom okay. of the quarry pool. Right, so here's, that's the, the steam engine I was talking about. Yeah. Okay, here's a picture of it. Yeah, so see, this stuff is all at the bottom still. It's a 65 feet in the dive area. The sleepy railroad junction town of Tenino had a really big boom in the 1880s when they opened these sandstone quarries. That boom ended when concrete replaced stone after World War I. So then the cl quarry closed in 1926. This picture here is of the quarry in operation in the 1890s. So the channeling machine that they found at the bottom of this pool was used to cut this, the big sandstone blocks, but it was, it was powered by steam. That's why it looks like a steam donkey. So in front of us is the Tenino train depot. Well, let's go take a look inside the Tenino Depot Museum. After you. Hello. I guess Campbell and Campbell was the big like general store mm. in town. So next to the bank building, the state Tenino Bank, that's the Campbell and Campbell building. Okay. These are safety deposit boxes. Yeah. So you'd know a combination to open, to open air, open your box. Look how fancy that facing is. Yeah, so this is this interesting thing that Tenino did, where they issued wood money. They had $1 bills, 50 cents, and 25 cents. During the Great Depression, 1931, when money was scarce, they developed this uh, wooden money. So here's the Hercules sandstone quarry. 1908. Is this the channeling machine? Yeah, so th this is the channeling machine in the Hercules quarry. Look at this neat side saddle. I've never seen a Western style side saddle. How the, the seat of it is really flat. So would the woman's leg one over here and one would be under here? Is that how that worked? I believe so. Right, so her knee would have been kind of under this. Yeah. Going, going down to the stirrup. Mm -hmm. I think this is all dentist and barber tools, maybe doctoring. Yeah, there's drugs there on the wall. Mm -hmm. There's the stove. So you would have built your fire, I think, in one of these compartments. Probably the one on the right. Over here? Yeah. Yeah, because there's your oven at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think you built a fire in here, too, because there's burners Yeah, probably there. either side. Well, maybe we should get you a washing machine like that. I think mine might work nicer. I mean, I, I'd have to crank this one pretty hard to get it to No, that agitate. one has a ringer over there. That's true. 
You know, I had a cousin whose hand got stuck in the ringer. I don't, I don't think I want to get stuck in the ringer, too. I guess you're just going to have to use the washboard. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how narrow these shoes are? Whoever wore those shoes had really narrow feet. This is an old one-room school. Oh, wow, this is great. I love the holes in the desks for the like ink pots. So the museum docent was telling me that this schoolhouse originally was in the Skookumchuck Valley uh, near the Skookumchuck Grange that exists today and then was moved here in the early 2000s. Well now it makes sense why there isn't windows on this side. This is where the chalkboard is. Yeah. So they have the desk set up with each with the slate. So I can tell that this map is from a later period than the school. So post World War II, post 1945, because you can see East Germany and West Germany in the map. It's the Ticknor school. What's missing is the bell tower. Yeah. The one we're in now replaced the original. Yes. To yeah, school. in in 1932. Okay. And then they restored it in 2012. Right. So here's the second Ticknor School. Not sure what the first one was, but then the building we're in now, the school we're in now, replaced the second Ticknor School in 1932. This is showing how they moved the school to its current location. Did you ever have to write a sentence over and over again on the chalkboard for misbehaving? Maybe one time. <laughs> this is the, where the train tracks were. Yeah. You know that? Uh-huh. But then this was the main line running this way. See here, there's a line that we're standing on, then there was a parallel one that was closer to the depot that would have ran right up there. So is this the main one that would have run to Tacoma? Probably. And then this is the... Tanino Olympia line. It says here the depot service two tracks, the Prairie line on the east side of the station and the Tanino line on the west side. There would have been another line on the back side, and that's what connected Olympia to Tenaino. So what we have here is a Great Northern Railway caboose. So now we are inside the caboose. So I think what you have here is a table for eating, but also converts to a bed. The stove. They have their sink there. What do you think these four cupboards are? Where each worker are, kept their gear? Yeah, storage lockers. And then you could sit up here while it was underway. Yeah, I think so. We have a desk here with a lamp. I bet if the railroad workers had YouTube, they would subscribe to this channel. Well, that was Tonino. We hope you enjoyed the visit. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.